In the 20th century, there was one spectacular fiasco in the Italian aircraft industry that is still a topic of heated debate among industry insiders, historians, and aviation enthusiasts. We're talking about the spectacular failure of fighters of the so-called Serie 5, also known as the Stellar Trio. The first red flag in the story was that, in 1937, there was a massive shift in the balance of power in the Italian aircraft industry. Fiat, a massive industrial behemoth, seemingly lost its status as the only manufacturer that made planes for the Regia Aeronautica. The G-50 fighter aircraft, designed under the helm of a young and promising engineer named Giuseppe Gabrielli, was very good but the mach MC-200, created by the industry veteran and aerodynamics expert Mario Castoldi, was even better, even though it was produced by a relatively small company. Having sensed an opportunity, the aircraft building empire of Gianni Caproni decided to make a foray into the field of making fighter aircraft as well. Soon they started advertising the Reggiane RE-2000 to the military, without much success, but with a lot of fervor. Moreover, Italian aircraft engine manufacturers suddenly realized that they were incapable of creating engines that would be as powerful as contemporary foreign designs. That was the second red flag. Engines made by Fiat, Piaggio, Isotta Fraschini, and Alfa Romeo simply couldn't compete with their British, German, French, and American counterparts. Not to mention that they weren't made in large enough numbers and the situation at Fiat was only getting worse. When there was a chance to develop a fighter aircraft around the Daimler-Benz DB601, which was a licensed German engine, Mario Castoldi came up with the spectacular Folgore and easily won the competition. Caproni Reggiani also took part, and not without a bit of success. Their RE-2001 impressed the military and was approved for production as a multi-role fighter. Naturally, Fiat also submitted a design. Was it G-50V or G-51? The name doesn't really matter because it failed, leaving the Turin-based company with nothing, just around the time when the country, spurred by a mad duce, was headed towards the biggest war in history. No one cared that Giuseppe Gabrielli from Fiat, the loser, and Mario Castoldi, the triumphant winner, were comrades and actively shared ideas with each other. The top management only cared about the bottom line. Fiat was ready to do anything to regain its position as the indisputable leader of the industry, simply because government contracts meant fantastic profits. Not to mention Mussolini's German friends who were more than eager to get their own share of the Italian aviation pie. And that's when it all went down in flames. We'll never know why, at that critical moment, Germany failed to supply Italy with even a single DB601E engine. The power plant that would allow engineers to equip the Fulgore with an engine cannon, which was a feature highly requested by pilots. We're also very unlikely to learn the reasons behind the very strange way that Italy handled the production of the Daimler-Benz DB605. The 601 was produced in Italy by Alfa Romeo, but the 605 was somehow given to Fiat. Why anyone thought that it was a good idea to go through all the hoops of mastering the manufacturing process of a foreign engine twice is a question without an answer. What we do know is that General Francesco Piccolo, who oversaw the development and service introduction of the Fulgore, was removed from office in November 1941. Numerous failed attempts to kickstart the manufacturing process of the engine needed for the mach MC-202 at Fiat factories very well could be the reason for that, but that's just one possible explanation out of many. By the spring of 1941, the situation was completely out of control. There were three Serie 5 fighter aircraft competing for the new contract, but it looked like only one option actually made sense. The mach MC-205 Veltro was basically a fulgore with a new engine, which meant that its production could be set up in a very short time, while the prototypes delivered by Fiat and Reggiane 
required establishing new manufacturing pipelines from scratch. Yes, the Veltro was still quite complicated to produce, but the design could be streamlined and aerodynamically improved as a part of the drive to develop the definitive version of the aircraft, the MC-205N Orione. And then you could incrementally improve the design even further for the future MC-206. But when the Veltro was put into trials against other Serie 5 aircraft in Rechlin, Germany, Kurt Tank, who famously created the focke Wolf FW-190, singled out the Fiat G55 and insisted that it was the only way to go. Willi Messerschmitt, on the other hand, had nothing but praise for the Reggiane RE-2005 Sagittario, made by Caproni Reggiane. What was the right choice then? And how could you force two companies that lost the competition to build the design of the one that won? At that point, the Italian generals were at their wits' end. Build anything, they said. Please, anything! We're losing the war! And that's what was built. 262 Veltros, a couple of Orione prototypes, a single barely finished MC-206, and an MC-207 that never took to the skies. Fiat factories, badly hit by Allied air raids, only managed to build 274 G55s and a few G56 prototypes before the surrender. And Caproni Reggiane? Well, all in all, less than 50 RE-2005 Sagittarios rolled off the factory floor, even though the military needed thousands of fighters to protect the skies of Italy. In the end, as it turned out, the most produced fighter of the so-called Serie 5 was the BF-109G. Italy was forced to buy lots of those from Germany, paying dearly for every single plane. You know the end of that story. On September the 3rd, 1943, Italy signed the armistice that removed her from the ranks of nations giving military assistance to Germany. Some believe that the fiasco of the Stellar Trio was all a big conspiracy by Italian aircraft manufacturers. But that's just one of the many ways people tried to explain how the drive to develop three magnificent planes resulted in nothing but ruin. What do you think?